Hey guys, Jessica Myers here. I thought it would be fun for me to demonstrate my soaked blueberry muffins that a lot of you are already making. I want to show you how easy it is to make a soaked recipe. Um, and they're yummy. And they're allergen friendly, they're egg free, dairy free, and they can be very easily tweaked to be gluten free as well. So um, I thought we'd get started. Here I have a bowl with one cup of quick cooking oats. And I also have one cup of whole grain flour. This is 100% um, whole wheat. You wanna look for the word whole with um, whatever wheat or grain that you're looking for, okay? So you can use um, spelled, you can use a lot of different grains for this. It's a very versatile recipe, but I generally just do whole wheat because that's easy. And you can usually buy it at Walmart, not this brand, but there's other brands you can just buy at Walmart or any regular grocery store. So here we have those two grains and we're going to have an acidic medium for the flour to soak in. And to get that, we're going to use apple cider vinegar. Um, one tablespoon. And we're going to use one and a third cup of almond milk. This is vanilla almond milk. I like the vanilla flavor, but you can just add a little vanilla if you have regular, or you can just not have it vanilla flavored. That's fine too. It all works. And then you're just going to stir this together because you want the flour to be completely wet and it's going to soak overnight, anywhere from eight to 24 hours on the counter. Just cover it with plastic wrap and let it sit and you can see what it looks like here. I just want it to kind of be like a slurry and that um, apple cider vinegar is kind of kind of is going to kind of work on it to make it break down and um, turn a little gummy and gelatinous. That's good. That's what you want. Okay. So I'm going to set that aside and we're going to have muffins tomorrow. But for today's muffins, I have some that I've already soaked since last night. And you can see it's a lot thicker than the other one because it's been sitting and it's um, kind of this goopy gummy sort of consistency and that is what you want and to that you're going to add a tablespoon of tahini which is sesame seed paste however i'm out so you can use any oil that is on plan you just want a tablespoon this is butter um, you can use coconut oil just melt it because you want it to kind of mix in good you can even use mct oil i wouldn't have a problem with that um, you can use any sort of light baking or cooking oil so um, in addition to the butter, you want some extra moisture and you don't want to put too much fat in to avoid a crossover because this is an e-recipe. So what I usually use is applesauce. However, you can also use mashed banana, which is what I had today. This is going to add some moisture and give it sort of um, like it's going to feel like it has more oil in it than it actually does. So we're going to add three tablespoons of mashed banana. And then we want these to rise. So we're going to add a tablespoon of baking powder. And also we want them to be sweet. So we're going to add a third of a cup of gentle sweet. Now I use the xylitol free, but you can use whatever you like. Just um, if you're using super sweet, you're gonna use a lot less. And also these are a super sweet muffin. They're just slightly sweet. So if you want to add more or a little extra stevia, that's good. I just love them like this. And usually I'm a big sweets person, but one third cup is perfect for my tastes. Okay. Now we're going to add, um, in this little cup here, I have a half a teaspoon each of cinnamon, baking soda, and mineral salt. That's for flavor. Um, and you can, use anything but like sometimes I use pumpkin pie spice or add a little nutmeg be adventurous add whatever flavors that you think you might like um, and that's it for the muffin batter just stir it together until it's all really well incorporated see how easy this is this is the easiest recipe 
You don't even have to crack an egg. I mean, it doesn't get any easier than that, right? And then for the final step, and do wait till the last minute, because otherwise it will turn purple. <laughs> Add your blueberries. This is um, a half to three quarters cup. These are the large, full-size blueberries, and these are still frozen, just came out of the freezer. So they're kind of stuck together. Um, normally I buy the little ones. This is what I have, we're improvising today. Um, they didn't have the little ones. So um, you just wanna gently fold them in. And you can use any fruit or berry that you want in these. It's super versatile, so you can, um, do peach, I've seen people do um, raspberry, any kind you want. However, do keep in mind that whatever you put in here needs to be small. Like the large blueberries is about as big as you want to go because um, they have so much moisture. They will make the muffin kind of too wet on the inside, almost have like a like underbaked, but it's not underbaked. Um, so just make sure your fruit pieces are chopped small. So if you're gonna do, I don't know, strawberry or peaches, just chop them kind of small because you just want little bits throughout and you don't want a big chunk of fruit because it's not gonna feel like a muffin and bake through all the way. So anyway, this is what it looks like. Easy peasy, right? And then um, you just get your, it makes 12 muffins. And um, I sprayed this with some coconut oil cooking spray. And you just want to fill the cups about half to three quarters of the way. And I thought while I do this, I would just read you guys a few of the most frequently asked questions that I get about this recipe. And we can go over it in this video. So the number one question that I get um, almost on the daily <laughs> is, can I use old fashioned regular oats instead of the quick oats? And the answer is, you sure can. It's super easy. You get almost identical results. The only slight difference is with the quick oats, they break down even quicker with that apple cider vinegar in there and you get that really gummy texture which is what you want because for whatever reason, when they bake up from having that gummy texture, you get a really light, almost cake-like muffin that is very similar to like the naughty muffins. Instead of it being, um, you know, tasting super healthy and stuff, it tastes more like what, um, like a traditional muffin texture, which is nice. Um, so that's why I prefer to use quick oats, but you can definitely um, use the old-fashioned. Another trick that some people do is they take the old-fashioned and they put them in your blender food processor and just pulse like twice, boom, boom. And that'll just, because you don't want the turn, you don't want to turn it into a flour, but you want it to maybe be broken down a little bit for just, it's just optimum texture-wise, okay? So the next question I get asked frequently is, how do I make these gluten-free, okay? So this is super easy to do gluten-free. All you have to do is, of course, if you're gluten-free, you know you can buy certified gluten-free oats. So buy those, and instead of wheat flour, use buckwheat, okay? It turns out perfectly. I actually um, sometimes prefer that. Like, the flavor is so good, and sometimes buckwheat isn't good, but in these muffins, it is good, really, really good. So give that a try. Um, so another question I get asked is, if you're not dairy free, is it okay to use kefir to make these instead of the apple cider vinegar? Because a lot of people um, can soak their grains in kefir, which is another acidic medium, which works for that. However, you don't want to do that in this recipe for the whole amount of liquid because they become very heavy and um, super dense, not yummy and light. So what you can do, is instead of your apple cider vinegar, we use one tablespoon of this, you can use one tablespoon of kefir instead of this, and then let it soak with the almond milk. And that's it. That will work just as well. Um, so, um, if you don't want to, if you, are, if you need to be nut free, you can't use the almond milk. People ask, you know, is it okay to substitute coconut milk? Is it okay to use, um, just all kefir or regular milk or anything like that. So the answer is if you can't use almond milk, you can certainly use um, any other light, 
unsweetened refrigerated type of milk that's like 30, 35, 40 calories per cup, as any of those will work fine for store-bought options. If you just want to use water, I've done it accidentally one time, they're the same. Like water works just fine. So if you need to be nut-free, just don't use the almond milk, just use water. It's great, it's fine. Um, okay, so another question I get asked is, can we use the THM bacon blend, baking blend in this recipe instead of the flour, instead of the wheat flour? Um, I have not tried this personally, but I have seen where people have done it and had success. However, um, I like this, and then you don't have to soak anything overnight, you just bake them. You can try it, see if it works for you. However, um, I like e meals, I like grains, and I just like that traditional wheat flavor in a muffin, and this checks all those boxes for me. I love the baking blend for other things, but for these muffins, I'm just all about making them grainy. I love grains, I love bread, I love muffins, and that's the whole, like, that's the star of this recipe is um, the soaked grains. So that's why I don't use baking blend, and that's why um, you can try it, but I've never tried it. Um, so people often ask me how many muffins can you have in a serving? And the answer to that is um, generally about two. You want to have about two muffins. Each one is about 14, 15 net carbs. Um, so that's great for grains. That's a perfect grain serving size. So if you have two, because they're kind of small. I mean, they're not huge muffins. They're full size, but they're not like those giant ones or anything. Um, so go ahead and have two. And if you're still hungry, um, you can have a protein drink on the side. You can have um, some yogurt. If you want to have dairy, you can, um, you know, have something on the side with it. No big deal. But I would stick to about two. It's not going to hurt anything if you go up to three. But two is kind of my serving size, my recommendation. Um, also, people often ask me, There's th these are egg-free, they're dairy-free. Where in the world is your protein? You're supposed to have protein on all your meals. And that's true. So um, grains actually have some protein. And I ran the math on all of these because people keep asking me about that. And each muffin has four grams of protein. Um, so if you have two, you're already up to eight grams of protein. That's not a ton, but it's, you know, it's not bad. So occasionally having a lower protein meal is not a biggie. You can just have a couple of these and go about your day. However, if you add a little bit of collagen to your tea or your coffee, or if you have a little protein drink on the side, little baby one, um, then, or have some Greek yogurt, cottage cheese, whatever sort of lean um, kind of protein that you like alongside this, it's going to fill you up and get some extra protein in you if you're concerned about that. So the final question that I get asked all the time is, I have sprouted flour in my pantry. Is it okay if I use that instead of just the regular wheat flour? And you absolutely can, okay? Now there's some kind of magic that happens with these muffins when you let the flour soak overnight. So I highly recommend that you make these as directed. However, if you have sprouted flour and you don't wanna wait, all you have to do is instead of doing the soaking step, just dump all the ingredients, stir and bake, and you can have breakfast in under 30 minutes. So um, that's another totally great um, method for making these. So please let me know in the comments um, if you have made these, what kinds of tweaks you make to them, and um, how you um, how you like them, and um, if you have any other questions, I'll be glad to address it. So um, I hope this is helpful. Please stay in touch. Take care. Bye.